Studio 33 Art by Kay. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint and then resin a chartreuse board or a cheese board, I would call it. Um, this is part one where I'm just showing you how I do my paint. Um, so I just want to show you, this is one that I've finished that I've resined and I've got some beautiful glitter in the resin. I don't think you can pick that up. Um, I haven't got the lights on in the studio because it reflects too much. But when I resin it, I do a second layer of um, resin. So you've got the first wave and then the second wave. Um, and they do turn out absolutely beautifully. I know some people uh, just use coloured resin. I prefer to paint first and then apply resin after because I love the effects um, of the flip cup uh, paints when I do the flip cup, the movement that I get. So this is what I'm going to be showing you um, Today, first of all, is how I paint my boards. So I've been enjoying using the Pouring Masters paints for these uh, because when I put them on, they kind of create their own cells. And to me, that looks like the movement of the ocean, which is what I'm quite trying to um, replicate here. And I've got quite a few nice, beautiful colors, actually. Um, Peacock Teal is one of the ones. So I will um, show you all of these as I'm putting them into my little flip cups and I'll also list them in the description box as I always do. Um, but I've got here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colours. I've only got eight altogether um, in these sort of shades. And because I love them so much, I kind of always try and put all of them in there, which I probably shouldn't. I probably should have really limited it to about five. But um, anyway... That's what I do. And then I do a swipe with the Pouring Masters Luster White Metallic Pearl. And I'll show you how I do that. And it creates some beautiful lacing. Now you can do lacing with your resin. Um, I've tried and I still haven't perfected that. So I still prefer to do the, the lacing in the paint rather than in the resin um, at this stage. Although I do put a white edge on the resin and blow it out. So it does sort of give a churny wavy look but it doesn't give me the cell look that I would like to achieve. So I also have created a pale blue that my client that's asked for this particular board wanted some pale blue in there and I've created that by using the ice blue metallic pearl and I've just mixed it with the um, luster white metallic pearl. So I'm going to do four flip cups. Now I have done a few of these before and I've found that um, I've been trying to get the flip cups to sort of move over the um, board and it's been a bit difficult to get it to move so I'm going to actually today just put down a layer of paint first um, I won't let that dry or anything I'm just, it's just literally to help the uh, flip cups to um, flow so I think I'll use just the dark sapphire so that dark colour can then come up um, and add a bit of interest and contrast in my um, flip cups when I put them down. So I'm going to do that one first. So I'm just going to basically cover the board in that beautiful dark sapphire, which is a gorgeous colour. Always make sure, of course, that you've got your edges covered so when the paint flows over, that they'll all be covered. Now, I don't do anything like putting down a primer or anything on these boards. You could if you wanted to. I found that the, this paint does actually adhere very well. Sometimes it's just a little bit thin along the edges. Um, so what I do there is I just do a little finger pop all the way along the edges and that just helps the paint to stick. This um, Pouring Masters paint does actually adhere very well. So if you're using a different paint that you find doesn't adhere so well, you may want to um, put down a coat of gesso or some other primer first, just to get the paints to stick onto the timber. And I know that the Pouring Master sticks very well because it's, it's always a lot harder to get off my hands as well. So um, that's a good indication of a paint that's going to stick well is when you can't wash it off your hands terribly easily. I do get it off, but it's just not um, as easy as a lot of the other paints. Now, 
what I did with this board um, to prepare it before I started, I just got some plastic and then sealed that on. So I covered most of the board up to here. Just sealed that on with um, my tape. And then I created a template, which is here, with the shape that I like. And then I've put down two rows of tape because my tape wasn't wide enough. But if you had a wider piece of tape, you could um, just do the one row of tape. Then I put my template over the top of that, drew around it, and then got one of these little craft knives. And then cut around the, the drawing like that. And then just peeled off the upper piece. And that gave me my shape beautifully. So... That's what I like to do. When I put the resin on, I won't have a perfect neat edge though, um, but I do like to keep the painted edge quite neat because then it just makes it easier when I go to do the, um, the resin and I've got a sort of an edge that I can blow back from. That will all come clearer as I go along, hopefully. Um, so that's how I do that. And make, always make sure you do this one here, your, your template shape, um, after you've put your protection on the rest of the board because you do want to peel this off once your paint's sort of set for about an hour you want to peel that off otherwise if you leave it um, till the paint's completely dry you'll get a bit of a ridge and you don't necessarily want that ridge or it may even lift the paint a little bit so you want this to be on the top of all of the rest of your taping so that you can peel that off so voice of experience here because I've done it the other way at times and then I couldn't get this off because it was underneath the other tape and it was a bit of a disaster so um, hopefully that's um, clear what I'm saying there okay so now I've got that blade down I'm just going to burst some bubbles just got a heat embossing tool here and I'll just burst the bubbles so now I'm just going to load up my little cup so I just use these little shot glass well, they're not glass, they're just plastic. And they're very cheap to buy, but I just wipe them out and use them again. Um, those little bits that are in there, they won't, they're very dry now, so they won't come out. Um, but you can wipe those out or wash them out in the, in the sink, but into a bucket and then tip your bucket into the garden. Don't ever just rinse your um, acrylics down your sink because you'll end up blocking your drainage and it could cost you a lot of money to get a plumber out to fix that. So... Um, yeah, always be careful to make sure that you wash into a bucket and then tip it outside. Okay, so I'm just going to load up these paints um, into these four cups, hopefully um, similarly. So the first one I'm going to put in is the peacock teal. So I'll just, if I put these up here, because I've got the plastic there, it won't spill and you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So this is the Pori Masters Peacock Teal Metallic Pearl. I'm just going to put some of each of these in the cups here. That's my favourite one, actually. I love that one. Beautiful. Then I'm going to put in the Ice Blue Metallic Pearl. Just trying to run it down the side so it doesn't mix too much. I do like to be able to see the colours when I do the flip cup. And then I'm putting in the Lake Blue. It's a bit darker. I don't like that one as much, so I won't put as much of that one in there. Just a little bit of contrast. Next, I'm going to be putting the uh, Hawaiian Blue, which is absolutely gorgeous. Love it. I'd love a car that color, actually. It'd be very nice. So again, just pouring it down the side there. Now these Pouring Masters paints are already pre-mixed, so you don't have to mix anything with them, which is another bonus. And now I'm going to put the peppermint in there, which is a real greeny colour. I do like to have a little bit of green in there, just again, just to add a bit of contrast, to show a bit of movement in my waves. And then lastly, the Royal blue or well, not actually lastly i'm going to put my pale blue in there yet bit of that one so these are 30 mil shot glasses 
from Shot Plastics. So now I'm just doing that little mixture that I did of the ice blue mixed with the um, luster white metallic pearl. I'm just going to put that in there. Pale blue as requested by the client. If I haven't got enough of that showing up, I'll um, mix up a little bit more and add it in. When you do a flip cup or something like that, and you, if you haven't got um, a certain colour showing up, you can always just add a bit in. So don't be afraid to do that. Okay, so now I'm just going to have to do a quick flip. This is the messy part. About there. One, two, three, go. And another one down this end. Oh, didn't flip that one. Chucked it instead. <laughs> and another one about here. And then the handle, I'm just going to basically um, run it up the handle. I can't really flip it very easily, so flip it on the edges there. You can see how those cells are developing. It's just absolutely beautiful, this paint, for doing this technique. So I'll lift those off now. Probably got miles too much paint on there, but I do find this dries very nicely. Um, and you can, of course, catch all your drips onto a... Um, I've got a silicon mat under here, or um, if you've got some baking paper. And you can then make beautiful... Um, jewelry out of the skins which I've never done but I have seen people do that now that pale blue that I did is actually um, showing up there nicely so even though it was the last in so you would expect that would have um, but because I accidentally tipped it instead of flipping it um, it's showing up lovely and it's really nice okay so now I'm just going to gently tilt these around this is when you end up with a lot of paint going everywhere but that's just um, part of the process. Okay. Always make sure you've got the back of your board really well covered because you get a lot of paint on your little cups there underneath. And if you get a lot of paint on, on the underside of your board, it's very hard to get off later. So it's best if you can protect it in the first place. Okay, so I can just see here where I can see the um, blue that I had underneath, that beautiful dark sapphire. And um, so I really want to get those sides covered. So you just literally get some paint on your finger and just pop the colour on there. And that will blend in nicely, hopefully. You can see the base colour coming up here. That's the dark sapphire. So I only just wanted a little bit of that. And you can see a bit of it over here, um, which I'm not loving. So I'm just going to get this bit of paint still left in there. Just put, just put that over there. And let it run over the edge. It's always hard to see where your tape um, actually is. So when I go to pull this off later, um, I can see the edge there. But it's always hard to see, so you'll lose a bit of that pattern. That's why when you swipe, you want to swipe, make sure you're starting off here and move it up um, so that you're not going to miss any little bits that are there. I can see that's an edge there, which is fine. If you want to just pop a bit of colour in there, you can. Right, so I'm quite happy with that. I'm just going to hit it now with the heat embossing tool just to burst any bubbles. You can see how much movement I've got through doing a, a flip cup or four flip cups. Just checking the edges. You can see I've just missed a bit here. I'm just checking the other side, which is the benefit of having this on a turntable. Just a bit there that I can see all that underneath colour. 
I don't mind the dark blue coming through, but I just don't want big pockets of it. I don't mind there being a little bit there. Um, I might just dab in this other over there. So it's up to you what your composition looks like. So now I am going to do a bit of a swipe. I'm loving that I can see that pale blue there that I um, put on there so it has come through, which is very nice. Most of it got tipped off in the end. But it's still there. That's a whole big band of it there and through here and here. Okay, enough waffling on. So now what I'm going to do is put some of the um, Pouring Masters Lustre white metallic pearl and it gives this beautiful lacing effect so I'm just going to use this little um, offset spatula I'm going to pour that on there and when I'm swiping this you've got to do it firmly enough that it's going to go onto the paint but not so firm that it's going to scrape the paint off because I'm going to be stopping this swipe halfway um, and down this end less than halfway because I want it just to look like the foam of the waves so it's going to create a bit of a tsunami of paint which will it will level out um, but you don't want to have it being too much paint pushed if that makes sense so I'm just going to flip this now into here and then swipe up about that far You could also just put the white paint down onto the paint um, here and then swipe from there. That one's better. See, I had too much paint, white paint there, and so it hasn't let the cells through, but that's okay. The waves, the ocean has, you know, variations like that in it anyway. I might just try and swipe that slightly more. Just to thin it out that a little bit more. It'll be a bit better. Always make sure you wipe off your um, swipey tool between swipes. I don't want it to be too thick. So I do want it to sort of thin out and create, create those cells. I did one of these a little while ago and I, I don't know what I did, but I had the most beautiful lacing on it. I haven't quite been able to duplicate it the same since. You know, I was using the same products. That's the thing about this type of art form. Okay, so not too much on there. And I think I'll start about here. So I'll start right at the edge of where the paint is. And then just swipe up. You can see how much paint there was moving there, but it will level out. I've done enough of these now to know that. And then just a tiny little bit at the end there. Oops, now I've wiped the paint off the edge, which I didn't want to do. Okay, so now what I always do is put a few... Um, bits of the luster white metallic pearl through here to create little bits of foamy wave so just like that don't forget your handle and I might do a little bit just there as well and it's just wherever you think, really. Not too much. 
sometimes I go overboard. And then I'm just going to do a very light swipe through each of those to create some cells. Actually, I think I'll use um, a playing card. Just usually just rip a thin piece of playing card off. I find that creates the cells better with the, just very lightly. Off. Sometimes takes a few seconds for those to um, develop. Right, now I'll hit that with the heat embossing tool and that will make the cells come up a bit more. I kind of lost my um, bit of a wave, a bit of foam there, so I'll just do a little bit more here. Get my little piece of card there. It's better. You see they keep developing as time goes on. And then what I like to do is just run a skewer through here. So just one of my bamboo skewers, as you can see. And I just create a few little um, wrecking lines, just again to create some movement. So. And I go through my little white waves when I'm doing that as well. So just like that. Always wipe off your skewer in between each one. And basically just randomly wherever you feel like you want that to be. I want to go, go through the middle of this guy. And here as well, he looks a bit more like a worm at the moment, so we'll just break that up. And up here. And then I usually put a bit of movement through my um, foam here as well. Just creates these beautiful wrecking lines. I always say I don't want to go overboard, but then I end up going overboard, so maybe just one here. There we go. 
Yeah, so that's um, created a beautiful ocean there, and um, which I just love this effect of these wrecking lines going through the foam. Yep, that looks really nice. I'm thinking there's probably not as much of the pale blue in there as um, I would have liked. It's kind of disappeared. Um, there is a big streak of it here though, so it is in there definitely. Um, so if you ever hit that situation and you sort of think, oh, there's not enough of one of the colors that I really wanted, just add it in, you know. I've got a little bit left here. So I can literally just um, take it here. And then I'll just, may even just swipe over the top of that. And I'll put a little bit over here just to add it in. There's not much left in my thing here. And get my little piece of card, wherever it's gone, I can't find it, so I'll just do a new one. I'll just swipe that through. small wrecking line through there just to connect that one there through there and just wreck through there as well okay so now I've got a bit more of that pale blue there a big streak of it there and another bit of it over here and there's I can see some of it up there as well so it's definitely in there so this looks like there's a heck of a lot of paint on there um, and people might often think oh you'd need to spin that off but in actual fact I have found that this actually dries really well um, so even though it's got quite a depth of paint on there um, it will dry quite well or very well um, so I'm just going to check my edges because sometimes when you're doing these boards as I say the paint doesn't always stick on the edges so I just make sure that it has and I just get a little bit of paint off the underneath there and just literally just dab along any of the edges because that will blend in um, but I think I haven't covered there I've covered all right there it's a little bit there that it's gone a bit thin on the edge Don't need to do it everywhere just where you see that it looks like it hasn't um, stuck like here I can see the blue base coming through so I'm just literally lightly dabbing along the edge there and that looks perfect on this edge it's completely covered there it hasn't gone thin at all so always just check for that. Okay, I think everything's looking good now. So I'll let that dry probably about a week actually because it's quite thick. Um, and then I will come back and um, resin it and I'll show you how I resin it. So look out for that video. Um, so thanks for joining me today guys hopefully you've enjoyed that one i will bring you down for a close-up in a moment um so i'll see you down at the table in a sec here i am coming down for the close-up i've got the um, torch on just to try and let you see some of the shimmer here you can see hopefully you can see how shimmery that is it's just beautiful i love these paints for this um, particular technique you can see where I've um, created that foam there by using the Luster White Metallic Pearl and doing a bit of a swipe. And then I've done the other little mini swipes of the white in between. And then I've just um, done my wrecking lines through as well, which are lovely too. I love those wrecking lines and the effect that you get from doing those. And there's the handle. So I'm very happy with this one. There's my 
pale blue streak that I've got in there for the client that wanted some pale blue included. So don't forget to um, wipe your drips off from under here. Get a little spatula or a paddle pop stick or even your finger and just continue to wipe those drips off for the next half hour just to make sure that the paint's not getting continually pulled over the edge. Otherwise you'll come back in an hour's time and half your composition will have disappeared over the edge. Okay, so that's it for today, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed that one. And um, I'll see you back here in Studio 33 in the not too distant future. And I will be back to show you how I resin it in a few days. See you then. Bye-bye. Okay, so I'm just going to remove the tape. It's been mm, approximately 45 minutes since I um, poured this paint. So I'm just going to take the paint off. And this is why, the tape off, I should say. So this is why I um, tape this after I put the um, protection on the rest of the board because I want to be able to easily get this off. So I'm just going to peel it from underneath, including the white one. I'm taking that one off first. And now I'll take this one off. I haven't got too many bits to be contending with at the same time. You end up with um, paint and tape going everywhere, which I don't want. And now I'm just going to cut this, take this piece off, which was the piece that I had cut into the shape that I wanted on the board here. Now it's not vital when I do my resin, which you'll see in a few days, um, it's going to be. It's going to be an uneven edge anyway, but I do like to start with a straight, well not a straight, but with an even um, painted edge. First, it's just my preference, the way I like to do things. Everyone does something a different way and that's okay. So just taking that off. I can see this one little piece here that's gone underneath. So I'm just going to take a baby wipe. You know, just a little baby wipe, put my finger in there. And I'm just going to wipe that off like that. And again, just to get it. I've got that nice neat line. And as I say, it doesn't really matter um, because I'm going to be bringing the resin over the edge of the paint and I'm going to do a white edge anyway, but it just gives me an edge to sort of start with. Okay, so you can see how I've got all my um, foaming water there, which is great. And it looks like it's um, setting up very nicely. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that. Bye.